Hello folks and welcome again. I was asked the question, what is Black's Law Dictionary? So I decided to share with you folks a few of the other dictionaries that I have and go through it systematically. Let's go straight to Black's Law Dictionary. This is my copy of the Black's Law Dictionary and it's the fifth edition. It's bluish in colour, I can't comment on it. But essentially what is it? Well, this is essentially a collection of concepts. They are not laws, they are not rules, they are concepts. What does that mean? It means the volition, the spirit of the game, what it means is in here in terms of the conventional courts. Black's Law Dictionary is world renowned and you find it in solicitors office, lawyers offices and courtrooms as well. In here of course as I have said is concepts. Concepts that you need to be aware of. Now if you go through the whole dictionary which is that's really simple to do, you will soon come to realize there's a whole heap of trickery going on here. So who created the Black's Law Dictionary? Well, it's the black arts. It's the black arts of the people that call you in as the all caps name. That much you already know. The continuation for making sure that the language that is also spoken to you, as well as the language that they speak, is in the language of cursive or the language of the dead and they speak to you with abject contempt. In fact you are in a place of belligerence towards you. The black family out of uh, Venice like the black pope speak these languages, the, tongue, the language of twisted tongues, the language of hearsay, the language of nuances, the language of babel. That's all it is. When you look up a word like person, you soon come to realize they're not talking about men or women, they're talking about artificial entities. And there are hundreds of these types of definitions. So when I say to you, listen here folks, or listen here persons, or the persons in this room can you pay attention, when I say it, you think that I'm saying it, and you'll be right, that you are the men and women in this room. So when the courts write to you as a person, or the banks write to you as a person, they're speaking to you as an artificial person. I didn't know a flesh and blood person can be artificial. I mean that sounds as about as counterintuitive as you can possibly get. But on paper, on paper, they get away with these things because just like the word person, that's just one in 10,000 words or more, when I'm using the word person, I'm standing in honour, meaning the volition, the spirit of the game, is that I'm talking to living men and women. But in their Nakaramanzi world, they are speaking about artificial entities. They are talking about dead people, dead creatures, dead persons, natural persons, all words that you can look up yourself. That, of course, is the black arts. Just like pharmaceutical means maker of poisons and potions. Yes, that's what it means, maker of poisons and potions. That's why you need a license, because it's a poison. You see where I'm going with this? And that sort of definition is found in the Black's Law Dictionary, the Buttersworth Dictionary, and a hundred and other ones that I'm no, I don't wish to go into. Then, then of course, you're going to have to realize the black arts, the black families, all speak this language that the meanings of which means directly contrary to your natural intelligence. Who would ever thought when you walked into a bank that they might be speaking to an artificial person. Like, for example, one manufactured, and they call them androgynous. Unfortunately, androgynous people have little or no rights because they're manufactured. Now, I will be in future doing many more videos on androgynous people or androgynous artificial persons. Just because 
people can manufacture other human beings and treat them as artificial doesn't mean you're going to get away with it. Movies like Cloud Atlas was essentially created for androgynous persons to make their subconscious mind or the lack of it go to sleep. And sleep it does because just like so many religious folks out there who are waiting for the messenger, that's what Cloud Atlas does. It gets you in a position where you are looking for a messiah to rescue out of the predicament that you are in. Androgynous people, human beings, creatures, manufactured by human beings, yes, doesn't mean that they do not have a standing. Now, a lot of androgynous people that were actually manufactured or was done to them at birth are starting to develop subconscious minds. They're starting to dream. What do you think is going to happen? You think you can make movies to subdue them as you have been doing with the nations so far? No. So you imagine what's going to come next with androgynous people. Let me show you the symbols of the Black's Law Dictionary. Do you see it? It's got a key. It's a golden key. And it's got three dots on it. That's trust law, Father, Son and the Holy Ghost, a judge, a clerk and of course the other guy that sits on the right hand side of a courtroom. Three. Okay. You'll find this word three come up again and again. And it's the key. So you can unlock what it means in trust law. Three people. This, of course, is in the world of fiction. In my world of facts, I am the trustee, the beneficiary, as well as the administrator. Why wouldn't I be? It's my business, isn't it? Now, that's just a, a facet of what the Black's Law Dictionary is. And let me make it very clear. This dictionary has no definition. It has no thesaurus. What it really is, is a concordance, like the concordance that you used to see in the old Bibles, giving you concepts of what these words are. And they all have different meanings to the meanings that you use every single day, like, hi, hey, how are you doing? But hey here means something entirely different, just as a person does. I think you know what I'm getting at, okay? This this dictionary is a dictionary written for dead people, artificial people, or lost dead at sea. It says give you trust. I think you know where I'm going with this. It's a worthless piece of work. Worthless. But if you wish to understand how the necromancy world works, it's a good read, like a horror novel. This is black Stones Police Operation Manual. It's not in black, but it's black, just like a black dictionary or a black's medical dictionary. Start making the connection. The black arts, pharmaceutical, maker of poison and potions. The black arts. How is it when you are face to face with a police officer where the outcome is always disadvantaged you. Why is that? I've made videos on it. I've explained it. Why would you be disadvantaged in front of or with a public safety officer who is there to safeguard you? What public violation have you done? Well, it's called criminaliz criminalization. They take those things which are just part of your everyday life, i.e. driving about, moving about here and there, and they create laws that are so difficult to understand that you are criminalized for your lack of knowledge of the law. Well, law means it's by consent. You haven't consented, so how can they criminalize you? Take, for example, Wi-Fi. Well, less than 10 years ago, they used to criminalize people that had an open Wi-Fi network. Yet they did not criminalize 
those companies out there that have a open source Wi-Fi. Why is that? Well, you can imagine, because they don't want you sharing things. Well, that's my bloody business, isn't it? If I wish to share my Wi-Fi, it's my business, nothing to do with you. You can't go around criminalizing people. Have a little read of this dictionary, and in it, you will see that police officers can make up stories, they can lie in order to get a conviction. Did you hear what I said? They can lie in order to get a conviction. They can mislead you, make false accusations at you. I give you a typical one with road users. You might be stopped on the left-hand side of a road, depending on which country you are. The police officer comes up to you and says, why have you parked there? You turn around and you answer him, saying, oh, I'm just waiting for my friend or I'm just making a phone call. Well, you can't park there and he gives you a ticket for illegally parking. You were stopped. The word, the difference between stopping and parking are two different things. But the words came out of his mouth he put it into your mouth and because you don't know the difference between stopping and parking you've just walked yourself into a parking violation and that's just by trickery now take it to a much higher level follow this to the logical conclusion and you will realize the black arts are being played how can a police person a constable lie to you knowingly that makes him a liar that makes him an unfit person, man, woman, unfit, not fit for purpose. Wouldn't you agree? Before I go on to some other dictionaries, let's have a look at a dictionary that only ever makes sense. And a language that is only ever makes sense. Miller's. I'll drop in the website address where you can get it from. This gives you copyright release to use as language. Just the book. It's all you need to get. Okay? This is the only language that has been defined. It's the only language that has a thesaurus. It's the only language that has a mathematical interface on it. So corruption is virtually impossible, if not impossible. You see where I'm going with this? Out of all these dictionaries, here's this one little book here that replaces everything else. This is Collins' thesaurus. What does a thesaurus do? It gives you a, a relative amount of consistency. Let's imagine you only have one definition for a word and you know what that is. For example, stop. If you have a perfectly good word for stop, why would you want to create some more? Because the more that you create, the more convoluted it becomes. And the more convoluted it is, the easier it is to corrupt. The easier it is to corrupt, the more money they can make from it. I.e. stopping and parking. This is a dictionary of banking. What banking terms mean. Interesting enough read. So when the bank writes to you and it says things like you, it means you are the debtor. Sometimes you may get letters through your letterbox saying that your check has cleared or somebody's check has cleared in your bank account and it says you're the beneficiary. You are the beneficiary. In this dictionary, certain words mean contrary to everyday use. As long as these contrary everyday use exist, you are not in excess. You are not in control of your banking. That's one dictionary. These three dictionaries here are the seven C's dictionary. Well, at this moment in time, we don't have a seven C's. We have one ocean. You remember the movie Aquaman? Well, one of the stories was that they're trying to bring back the seven seas as to opposed to one ocean. At the moment, it's one maritime, 
one global operations. The Seven Seas Dictionary by Webster quite literally is the seven families or the seven contracts that control the oceans in commas. And this, this is the language that they use. Interesting enough, because they too have complete different meanings to the ones that you thought existed, i.e. in Oxford or Cambridge. Okay, now there is a few things about Webster's Dictionary. Webster said, my greatest crime was the bastardization of the English language. So if he's the author of this book, what do you think he's giving you a record of? The bastardization. He's also the author of the Seven Seas language and it's called Seven Seas Language Dictionary. It's quite a comprehensive work, but you come to understand the words that you taught meant something don't mean anything that you ever thought. You're always disadvantaged. Hence, Miller's language, uniform language. So you and I know exactly what we're talking about. If I find that quotation, and I have searched on the internet, I haven't been able to find it. If I find it, between now and editing, I'll drop it in to the image. That's Webster's Dictionary. It's also insightful. Why is it insightful? It's because the level of corruption is left right in front of your face. It's like Al Capone, who got convicted, not for murder or racketeering, or for playing around with alcohol, shall we say. It was for keeping immaculate books. That's what he was incriminated for. That's what he went to prison for, for bookkeeping. And the books revealed the level of his corruption. That's what these dictionaries do. They keep a complete record right in front of your face of the corruption. Miller's book undoes the corruption. Passe, syntaxing, documents that sits above all the other languages. No matter what dictionary it is, what courtroom it is, Supreme Court, lower court, this court, middle court, up earth, middle court, heaven court, whatever court it is, Miller's sits above all of them. It's a far superior language technology. That is what superiority means. It just makes do away with the rest of this garbage. This one, ladies and gentlemen, is also a concordance, a dictionary, thesaurus, a book of banking, maritime, it's actually a very good record of all the things that go along in your world. And I mean go along parallel. It's King James's 1611. Okay, 1611 Bible. What is the Bible? It's a record of banking. Yes, it is. It's a record of banking. It's also a record of the oxymorons that exist in our life. And I did a video on Eve, the truth about Eve. Very telling, okay? It gives you a record, just like these dictionaries, of the corruption, as well as the solution. One of those solutions is in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, God is not the Creator. It's man-made. Remember what I say, when you have a perfectly good word for something, why would you want to create another word for it? Can you imagine another word for stop at traffic lights, that it means something else entirely to a different culture? Halt means stop. Stop means halt. There is uniform language out there, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to mar maritime manoeuvring. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of crashes, like car crashes. And yes, cars are vessels, you are vessels as well. Let us look at one corruption that has always caught my ear. That is, let us go forth and confuse them. Did you hear what I said? Let us go forth and confuse them. I thought creator was a singular. 
I thought God, although it's man-made, is a singular. Now a us turns up. I wonder who us is and corrupt their language. The tower of, you fill the words, the tower of what? Isn't that a record of the corruption of language telling you we've corrupted the language so you may not ever construct anything? So you can never come together to agree upon something. It's telling and it's in your face. Just as you cannot argue with logic and rationality, you cannot argue with the rationality. If you wish to have a gigantic leap of faith, as it were, and ignore the facts that are in your face, then you've got no business watching this, and you should just simply switch it off. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching and listening. If you like this video, press the like button. If you don't, dislike it. If you wish to put some comments on it, help yourself. No swearing, no foul words, otherwise I'll remove it. In the many years that I have been on YouTube, I only had to remove three people. Only three, because they started using foul language. I welcome critiques, and I welcome anybody that has something to say. Try to make it factual, so it can mean something to the rest of the world. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.